RMS Taylor was an iron clipper ship that was built in Warrington and in 1853 was thought to be uh, the largest English merchant vessel. But 160 years ago on a maiden voyage to Australia, she ran aground sadly and sank off the coast of Ireland. Now, local author Jill Hoffs is open to tell the story of the ship, but she needs your help and she's looking for other information as well. And Jill has popped in for a chat. Hello, Jill. Hello. So where did your involvement with this come from? Well, I live in Warrington now. I consider it home, despite the accent. Yeah. And I was in the museum, and they've got a tiny um, display that's crockery and a porthole from the wreck. And I was looking at it, and one of the curators came over and said, oh, that was built here. It was ginormous. It was the Victorian Titanic. And I thought he was pulling his, my leg, because it's inland, and it's quite a shallow bit of Mersey. But no, he was right, and he was dead on. And that's where my love of it began. So is there a lot of documentation about it then, out there? There is, and there isn't, in that it made headlines around the world. It was covered in the press, Australia, Germany, you name it, it was big news. But as for official documents um, and the real causes of the wreck, I'm still trying to find out, because there were four inquests, but they were all a bit dodgy, so to say, um, and I'd like to know more. So we don't know why it sank? Well, there's a lot of theories about it, and um, especially the technical side have been dealt with by people with more knowledge than I have, um, about the iron clipper distorting the magnets, um, the rigging being stretchy like rubber bands, um, and not doing the job that it was meant to, so they couldn't steer it. But apart from that, there's there's new causes in my book, more to do with the people involved. Um, so if, if you'd like to know more, you're, you're very welcome to read it or contact me. So, <coughs> excuse me, the book's out now, isn't it? It is. It was released last week. Yeah. I mean, it must be great to have the physical book in your hand after all the hard work you've been putting in and swatting and, oh, and yeah. talking to people. and I yeah. carry it about and cuddle it, basically. <laughs> and you deserve to. Now, there are over 600 people on board the ship when it sank. But you want to trace one particular family, don't you? I would really like to know more <coughs> about um, the captain who lived in Liverpool at the time. But really, anybody with any connection to the tailor, if they could get in touch, that would be great. Because there were so many families from Liverpool who were on board. And a lot of the crew were from Liverpool too. Um, and this is where the people came back who'd survived um, some of them went out on another ship, some of them went home. You may not even realise that you've had family involved, so I would advise any genealogists or anyone with an interest to at least flick through the back of the book and look through the comprehensive list of names, because you don't know. No, you don't really. What was his name, the captain? Captain Noble, John Noble. John Noble? Yes. Noble by name and noble by nature, and he's he's buried in uh, the Toxic Cemetery. So... What are you? What are you? You're trying to tell the full story here. Is this maybe another book you might be working on, for future reference? Or well, if you ever have a future edition, you can always add things in, mm. and especially with the the online age, never you're never finished. You're never completely done. There's always things you can add, and that's what I'd like to do because I think there'll be people with uh, family stories, and I would just love to know anything, anything at all. Mm, interesting one. And uh, where is the wreckage off the coast of Ireland? It's it is. It's just beside Lambay, which is an island covered in wallabies now, um, in Dublin Bay. Right. Um, and as it was described at the time, it rises like a mountain from the sea. Really? Yeah. Yeah. They had no chance really when they got when they got that close with the tide going in. They had no chance. And it was about this time, exactly 160 years ago today, that they spotted land. Half an hour later, that was it. It's gone. Yep. You've been invited to... I mean, the, the wreckage obviously is still there, isn't it? How did it they is. discover the wreckage? Well, there was lobsters, basically. Lobsters with rusty bottoms. And they put two and two together and worked out that, well, it must be because there was something large and iron there. This is the iron ship that had be, been wrecked. And went diving and found it. It's actually quite shallow water. About one of the sentences I wasn't expecting to hear this morning, <laughs> this morning was lobsters with rusty bottoms. That's a t-shirt right there. <laughs> <laughs> and, a, and a name of a band. <laughs> but um, isn't that interesting? And that's how they thought, well, hang on a minute, this is where it is. And they went down. I bet yeah. you'd love to go down, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. Very yeah. much so. Yeah. 
I've yeah. always thought about that, but then I've thought it'd be very, very eerie, wouldn't it? It'd be creepy, especially because some of the things that you can see just now are gravestones, because when the ship was going over, it was filled with everything emigrants would need, everything the people in the Australian gold rush would need, so like boxes of shoes, crockery, but also gravestones. Really? So if you go down, you can see them, and they're toppled over like dominoes, all these blank gravestones. And I find that so eerie and so touching because so many hundreds of people were lost almost all the children almost all the women and they've got this effectively underwater graveyard for them yeah isn't that unbelievable eh? yeah so where can we get your book jill um waterstones wh smith all good bookshops and online okay and the book's called the sinking of rms taylor the lost story of the victorian titanic and there's a launch event for it in warrington waterstones on thursday the 23rd from seven till eight there'll be a short talk scones and cakes unfortunately no nutella but if you ask me nicely i might bring any, you some any rusty, rusty bottom lobster available on the night <laughs> if you want to bring some you're welcome to <laughs> Uh, so, so give us the details of that one again. Waterstones in Waterstones, Warrington. yeah, in Warrington in Golden Square. It's great disabled access and parking. Okay. And it's seven till eight, um, Thursday night. So that's this this Thursday. Uh-huh. And there'll be a short talk on uh, the Warrington origins of the ship and connect connections to the local area, uh, and scones and cakes and the like. And something we should mention, you know, it's got an interesting spell in the way it's Taylor. <laughs> yeah, it looks French, doesn't so it? I was, I was saying Taylor before. <laughs> it's T-A-Y-L-E-U-R. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's named after the chap who, who ran the uh, foundry where it was built. I see. So, Jill is very interested. If you've got any information at all about any of this story, um, the captain's name was John Noble. Any uh, distant relative of yours should be thrilled to have a chat with you. Have you got a website yourself as well, Jill? We can have. I do. It's Jill Hoffs, and I think it's a it's, WordPress. It's Jill with a G, isn't it? It is. Jill Hoffs. H O F F S. Oh, Jill Hoffs. Like the singer from the Bangles. Absolutely. Jill Hoffs at um, hotmail.co.uk. Okay, that's brilliant. where you can get in touch with me well listen good luck with the book good luck with the launch and uh, thanks for telling us about that really interesting story thanks for having me in yeah great to meet you Jill thank you you too